Welcome back to Eureka Farms for episode two with me, Mr. Sealy P. We're back at Eureka Farms, the wacky and wonderful world of Goham Industries Research Division. Thank you for all the comments, everything was mentioned and passed on and suggested from the first episode. Um, the, as you've already just seen, I should have already put a couple of clips up. Um, this has had a bit of a workout. We earned a bit of money. I spent a bit of money. That is now owned. I bought one, so the least one went back. What I'm going to do, though. I mean, yeah, it's a wacky world. We should wash it. We should. It looks terrible. I've taken on a contract. Now, um, a few people suggested, well, a few people, loads of people suggested ideas for tractors. I have got an idea for a tractor I want to go with. But I'm not going to do that yet. Because a few people suggested something else. Which I tested out, and then suddenly thought, I had a bit of an epiphany. And I suddenly thought, hang on a moment. So I tried something else, which I'm going to show you. And it's pretty cool. And the cool thing about it is, the thing I'm going to show you doesn't have to be done on a TNT farm. You can actually do it on other ones. And also, thank you to everyone who's, who's been mentioned about all the various different bits of equipment and machinery that I, I can't forget. I am going to be doing a huge sugar, sugar, beet harvest, uh, sugar cane harvest at some point. I'm probably going to do a load of potatoes at some point. I want to do a big old silage harvest. Um, because, well, I say a big old silage harvest. And, yeah, <laughs> not as big as I, the one I did on Stone Valley. I am going to do some cultivating. We're going to have a go. Uh, we're, a lot of people suggested cows and going to the maximum, going up to like 2,000 cows. The problem is because I've got a factories mod on, that can cause a problem or is causing a problem. And it's something I haven't actually tested. So let's check that as well. With regard to pastures, so if I put a cow pasture now, now that's interesting, because a lot of people have said, if you've got the factories mod installed, which I have, because I wanted to have a go at it, it will not allow you to place animal pastures. Well, that has come up green, I don't want to place it yet. But that's something we'll have a look at, whether there's a conflict or a problem. I may go up to i might find a modded one maybe a cow pasture i may go for a thousand and then we'll look at whether we can store enough tmr i mean that will hold enough of whatever we'll make as much as we can we'll do loads of grass work we'll do a load of uh, using the loading wagons and things like that and we'll we'll get there that's the plan so what am i going to show you i've taken on the contract another one 
and I'm going to use the Roadrunner because the Roadrunner in this form has got a front three point link and it does have a rear trailer hitch with a PTO obviously that was not in the light at all so when we swing around we'll see it so this can be used as a tractor a lot of people mentioned the TLX and said about giving the TLX a go this has got 1800 horsepower the version I went for so here's what I'm going to do this is utilizing something I mentioned in the previous episode and that is the drawbar so the lizard three-point hitch drawbar which is that little thing there now there are two or three different variations on this so that will take a three-point link and put it onto a single drawbar attachment which this already has a single drawbar attachment so why would I want to do that you will see I think it's something that DJ has done for a little while the whole fast farming thing but I'm also going to couple it with this because at the moment that does not have a three-point link so I can't hook that drawbar up to this drawbar because it's already got a drawbar I need a three-point link now some lorries do come with a three-point link attachment on the back if you get one like that you can hook one of these straight up I'm going to use this this is the trailed lifter now this came with the big bud pack on FS17 but I think it's standard in game now if we go across to our miscellaneous it's right there the trailed lifter so that's standard in game now there are a couple of modded ones, and I've, I downloaded them both because I wanted to give them a, a fair shout. But, have I not got them installed? Did I not install them? I thought I used them. Oh, okay. Well, one of them is the Hay Cutter Dolly by White Ball Modding. The other one is the Trailed Lifter by Pepe978, which is, in essence, that, but a shorter version. I gave both of those a quick test and neither of them worked as well as the standard one the standard one seemed more stable didn't give me any issues at all which is a wonderful you know i'm not quite sure what my thumbnail is going to be yet so you probably already kind of know where i'm going with this anyway but you're probably wondering how so the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get a plow i'm probably going to buy it should i buy it yeah i'm going to buy it why not and that's the one I'm going for, the John Deere 2410. I used that in my last six sashes episode because this one is by JA Modding. It's a 12 meter plow. Now the Gregoire Besson SPSL 9 is a 10.5 and with various different attachments and things, I know people have used different frames and they've hooked together all different sorts of ones to get wider. That is 55,000 to buy, 12 meters wide and only 55 grand. That one, 130,000, 10.5 meters wide, requires 550 horsepower. This one requires 200. Bit of a difference. I mean, don't get me wrong, my lorry, my roadrunner has got 1,800 horsepower, so that's not going to be an issue. So I'm going to buy one of those for 55 grand because that's going to come in jolly handy. So what I'm going to do, oh, that's not going to work too well, is it? And the thing about this is, it's a centre pin hitch. So rather than a three-point link, it is a trailed single hitch. And there are all... No, so this is just the way I'm doing it. There are loads of different ways this can be done. Cultivating, we can speed up, definitely. Seeding, we should be able to seed up. <laughs> seed up, speed up. But ploughing has always been one of those things, it's a bit of a chore, it's a bit laborious, and you think to yourself, do I really want to bother? Well, so, three-point link on the trailed lifter. Hook that up to the drawbar. So the drawbar is now attached. The drawbar is in its regular position, its lowered position. And a little bit like the um, tool height control for headers that we used in the previous episode, this tricks the system really so i'm going to hook that up so we're now hooked up top left hand corner everything's in a straight line so to speak the plow's lifted because it's not unfolded yet and we haven't put it into the ground but what i want to do is lift that trailed lifter uh, not the trailed lifter i want to lift that drawbar if i lift that drawbar up that tricks this into thinking it's not actually plowing 
It's a bit sneaky, but it does work. So what I'm going to do is switch to where I get to that tool. I'm going to lift it up. Then I'm going to switch to my plough. So at the moment, the plough is in its up position. So is that drawbar. That's the crucial part to all this. Like I say, there are all different ways you can set this up. But this does now mean I can use my lorry, my roadrunner, as a tractor. Now it hasn't got field tyres or anything like that on it. But don't worry. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to say. The situation with the roads. I had a comment left. Oh, who was it by? Who said they've been talking with TNT Modding. And TNT Modding said he's been fiddling around with the situation with grass where your road should be and has suggested that if you turn on the turn on turn off the collisions mod so if you've got disable camera collision i think it's that one disable camera collisions which was a mod that was added later on which a lot of people right from the start said giant should have had as a standard in-game feature and that's the collision you have if you're moving the camera around like this and you go around and there's a trailer, it doesn't like it and it goes a little bit all over the place. So you install that mod. If you disable that mod, or uninstall it, something along those lines, your grass should, you should go and your road should come back, and then you can put it back on again and it should work. Apparently. Well, I haven't tested it because I haven't had a problem in mind. But that should work. So, we're in a position now. Our plough. We're going to open it up. This is a big field. And the contract I've taken on, on this field is at the top there field six plowing pays 42 grand which is pretty good but it's a big field so what should happen now because i've got my little drawbar lifted i'm going to lower my plow but my plow thinks it's still lifted because the drawbar's lifted so what i can do now is plow and i've already gone beyond the nine miles now the plow suggests and because of the vehicle i'm using i can now plow <laughs> at 75 miles an hour as you can see it's bonkers but it's brilliant now all of these mods I'm using here are mods from the mod hub you can use any lorry that's got a trailer hitch you can use any vehicle that's got a trailer hitch with a trailed lifter and using that drawbar attachment to get it to run at the speed of the vehicle rather than the speed that the piece of machinery, the uh, implement, is rated at. So we've just done one complete strip in absolutely no time at all. The horsepower requirement of this plough is really low anyway, which is absolutely incredible. And away we go. Now again, if I hire a worker, the worker will just go at a regular speed. The worker won't go at the full speed of the vehicle. We are tricking the implement. But it does mean that ploughing a field this size will take next to no time. Compared to the potential hours it would have taken going up and down and up and down. Even with the biggest one being the SPSL 9 up to now. Have we had a bigger plough than that? We might have done actually. get a nice tight turning circle on it doesn't matter if I miss a little bit this is for a contract so as long as I hit 100% complete we are good to go I love it I haven't quite got 73, 74, yeah we can, we can hit 75, I'm just a little bit nervous, I need to get it in a straight line, I think what I need to do, let's first of all, if I hire a worker, get the worker going in a straight line first, nice and straight, now I'm over a little bit but that's not a problem, then unhire the worker, lower that back down again, and now I'm not going to touch the steering, hopefully this will carry on a straight line. I want to hit the magic 75. And hopefully keep in a straight line too. Come on. Is this field long enough to hit 75? I don't think it is, you know. Come on. I've 
back on, of course. Just a tad. But I think that was just me being a little bit off at the start. So there we go. That's the first of our slightly zany, slightly crazy little things we're going to do now. Now again, big field. It is 3.36. How long is it going to take me to plough this entire field? I reckon at 75 miles an hour. Again, who knows? Uh, what do we reckon? By four o'clock? 25 minutes, maybe? Let's give it a go. See how we get on. By four o'clock, maybe. <laughs> oh, man. It's 3.51. We're on the final strip. Contract completed on the previous strip that I was doing. There's a couple of tiny little bits I've missed, but other than that, the entire field has been ploughed. And again, for me, that has to be a record. Look at the size of the field. Contract complete. Collect. We go across to here. That's field six. That took no time at all. Craziness. We've now got a plough as well. We bought it, so that's ours to add to our collection. We've got a couple more harvest contracts, but the cultivating ones are the ones I wanted to have a look at as well. To show that the same premise will work, I'm going to lease one. I want to do one, field falls a big field, and pays out quite well. So I'm going to accept that contract, not borrow items. I'm going to accept it. We're going to take our plough back. But first I'm going to lift it, fold it, and we'll put it away. With our 1,800 horsepower tractor. Beats the big bud. Now, I know one of the NMC lorries, was it 1,200 horsepower it went up to? So it could pull the big dozer on a low loader. I'm going to put the plough to one side for the time being. Now, I am also wondering, <clears throat> and this is something I haven't tested myself yet, in that, if we go to ploughs, a lot of them are three-point link mounted. Not all of them, but a lot of them are three-point link mounted. Now, the same can be said for cultivators as well. A lot of them are three-point link. A lot of them are trailed, but some are three-point link mounted. So here's my question. I'm not going to test it, just in case you want to. At the moment, I've got the draw bar there, and I've got it raised with a single bar attachment onto it. If I want to put a three-point link mounted plough on there, if I move that draw bar, oh no, I can't put it there, can I? Because that, it won't hook onto there. I was thinking, if I put it there, then I could raise it there, but now that won't work, will it? Hmm. Stick with the single bar. It's easier. Right. Just get that. So what we now need is a cultivator. And we need a big cultivator. We know we've got the horsepower to pull it. I'm going to lease one. Now, leasing will be expensive. Now, this is more a proof of concept than anything else, but it does also mean that I'll be able to do this later on if I buy one myself. How much is that to lease? Oh, 9,400. So we'll still make a load of money on this. So let's lease this one. Let's lease the Flexicoil ST820. 
This isn't part of the TNT map, this is just a standard in-game. And it should work exactly the same way because we're using that drawbar hitch. And we should be able to get field 4 done, which was the field I first harvested in the last episode. It's hooked up no problem. According to my little control bar, top left hand corner, that tells me where all my implements are. The middle implement is my drawbar and that is still raised. The great thing also, that kind of freedom, that freeing up, doing a, a let's play or a map where you're not tied down to the usual rules. You can just drive wherever you like. <laughs> you haven't got to use the roads if you don't want to. I'm normally very careful to make sure I follow, you know, certain routes and things like that. But you don't have to. You can do what you like. It's very liberating. I think as well, and it's the timing seems to have been right as well. Um, depending on where you are in the world, in the UK, we the area I was in went from a tier three to a tier four. A lot of the areas were then told on Boxing Day, or the day after Christmas Day, depending on where you're in the world, um, that they were going into Tier 4, and then was it yesterday, when was it, day before yesterday? In the UK, we've gone into a full-blown, complete lockdown again, at least until the end of February, I think it is. So, things are a bit grim, and quite rightly, people are a bit fed up, and you just need something to alleviate that stress and in all honesty doing stuff like this it does and there we go we are now cultivating out to what how wide is it i always forget how wide this one is 20 something meters isn't it 23 24 meters if i can get it rolling just need to get it moving you notice there's a little bit of almost an elastic pull between the draw bar and this you need to be a little bit careful on the turns otherwise it can detach itself most like on a big piece of elastic. We are picking up speed, and this should get up there, although we seem to be sticking around 24 at the moment. But even that, we are cultivating at 24 miles an hour. Out to 24 metres. This is going to take a bit longer, because this is a massive field, but nowhere as long as it would take if you were doing it regularly. So I'm showing all these things for a couple of reasons. One, because, you know, it's interesting to see and and I'm by no means the first person to have done these things or thought of these things. People have sent me pictures. I've had a play around. I've found some of these things myself and other um, YouTube content creators, Twitch streamers. You know, loads of people have done these things before. I'm not I'm not claiming to have made these things up. They're just they're just here. Um, but also that I need to build my money up a little bit because I do want to buy a big tractor. Now, again, some people did say, well, if you're going to, if you're, if you're working for Go Ham Industries, the man himself, you must have an infinite supply of cash. Surely you can just buy whatever you like when you want. That is a fair point. I could, if I wanted to, I suppose, just put whatever money in I want and just get the stuff I want. But if I do that, then I haven't really got a challenge. Well, I suppose other than just the research and having fun, I guess, is the point, isn't it? I've still got my other head on, you see. I've still got my Mr. Silly P head on. Rather than the fun being the reason, I, I normally set myself a target. I need to earn a certain amount of money. I need to buy this piece of machinery. I need to build my farm and buy this and buy that. That is my, my challenge. That is my target. The target for this is having fun. It's just playing around with crazy stuff so I guess yeah I could just put in whatever I like if I wanted to am I going to I'm not sure at the moment <laughs> for me that may be a step too far I know I don't know I might do I don't get me wrong I use the government subsidy signs when I'm setting maps up when I'm doing my mod reviews all that kind of stuff because I have to you know it's the way I set things up 
I don't have those control systems and e easy, was it easy control? I always forget the name of it. The PC mod that allows that, anyway, for you to set things up almost, not instantaneously, but you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm sort of showing these. Because if I decide to do three or four contracts off screen, I don't want people to suddenly go, well, hang on a minute, you know, he's like, a day further on and he's a million pound richer that's not possible it is entirely possible in three contracts I went from 55,000 to 560 something or 580 something so I mean that the elasticity as I turned my trailed lifter pulled away from the cultivator that's the only thing you need to just be a little bit careful of see what I mean now that now that could be a problem if you get a hill and it could be just because this cultivator is a little bit too big. If I take it a little bit slower. I may have just gone a little bit too fast too quickly. And probably would have helped if I'd actually raised the cultivator rather than dragging it across the grass. Now, I don't know. That's the other thing. Do we have a field that is just grass? Because I need to buy... Can we buy the periphery on this map? No, it's all in sections, isn't it? Because I need a load of grass. If I'm going to do grass work, I'm going to need a grass field, which means probably buying a field and grassing it. How much is that field there? 476. Maybe one of these. Just buy that field and then grass the whole thing, maybe. How much is found? Yeah, that's going to be something I'm going to want to do because I'm going to need to start prepping hay and I'll need to do a massive cut to put into a bunker silo for silage if I'm going to do total mix ration I'm going to need to do total mix ration on a very very large scale although I think the biggest mixer we still have at the moment is the 45,000 litre one I really wish we had the um, so the pecan the bigger mega mamouette the 64,000 litre one that thing was phenomenal So yeah, anyway, so that's the trail lifter thing. I'm going to get this done, and then let's have a look at maybe grassing. don't know. Got a bit of a wobble on here. That's better. In all honesty, I'm now thinking about getting a large tractor. Is there anything I can't do with this tractor, or this lorry? Are there any jobs I can't do with it? With a front three, three point, I can pull anything I need to pull, whether it's a single mount or a three point link mount, I can pull it. I can put tanks on the front if I want to. I'm pretty sure the TLX 2020 was a lot was one of the vehicles that a lot of people suggested I use because it's a pickup, but it has got quite high horsepower. It does have a tow bar on the back, so I could also attach a trailed lifter, although it doesn't have a three-point link on the front. But it does have tanks and various different things. So yeah, again, there are loads of different various bits of machinery you could use for your tractor unit. This is just what I decided to go for, for the time being. It's 6.21, and as you've seen, I've been busy. I finished off the cultivating job on field four. I then went and did a harvest contract on field... One of the fields? What field was it? Terrible. Mine's gone blank. It was thir uh, field 13. We did. I've just taken on the oats contract on field 10, because I'm going to buy field 10. But I'm going to do the contract on it first. Might as well make a bit of extra money on it. But I'm going to buy that. That's going to be my grass field we're going to look at. So we're up to 667,000. I'm going to put a couple of factories in. We're not going to use them just yet, but I'm going to put them in. So if I scroll right across under animal pens, I've got the factories pack installed. And I think I'm going to go with, to start off with, I'm going to do sugar production because I want to do a big sugar cane harvest. So we're going to put one of these. Where should we put it? About there. Just trying to think about what way round I want this. 
actually probably want it that way around. Not that it doesn't matter greatly, but I'm going to give myself room around the back as well for taking in water and other things I need. So I'm going to put that one there. I'm going to do a bit of landscaping around it so I'll match up the concrete. And then I'm thinking, I did think about doing sunflower oil, so I'll do some sunflowers. But I'm thinking chips production. So I'll have a go at doing some potatoes too. So we're going to do the chips production factory too. So I have a couple of factories in place. That will force me to do a couple of uh, those sorts of jobs. So yeah, so we will be doing some sugar cane. We will be doing some potatoes. That's those in place. So what I would usually do now is just switch straight over to landscaping. Change that to square. Try and match it up as best I can. I should be able to match it up. Exactly to... Is that it? That's it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but now those will be activated when we're ready to use them at the moment. We don't need to. We'll leave them as they are. And then what I'm going to do is head down, get this contract done on field 10. I'll buy field 10 and I'll probably see you tomorrow now because it's what time is it now? Yeah, it's getting on. It'll be getting dark soon. And then tomorrow. What we're going to be looking at is field 10 we're going to be seeding planting we're going to grass it but we're also going to look at some fertilizing jobs um to use some of the new fertilizing gear and there is some quality gear but the other thing i'm probably going to place is a buy uh, manure because obviously i haven't got cows yet so i'm not producing manure or anything at the moment so i might either put in one of the edge castiga buy points or the Holger Sengstock manure system buy point for manure. I haven't decided on that yet. But I'm going to do one for manure. So we can have a look at the options available for fertilising. And that means I can take on fertilising contracts as well. I am doing these both completely differently, aren't I? Doesn't matter. Anyway, I'll have a fiddle around doing those. And, um, yeah, so the, the fun, the excitement and the insanity continues and i'm loving every second of it as i said earlier on in the video in all honesty anything to alleviate what's going on because we need to so right those are in place we'll come on to those at a later date i'm going to grab the harvester i've decided i'm not going to cheat any money in I know that would be the kind of bonkers, this is the bonkers, let's play, do what you like kind of thing. I know that would be the easy option, but I do still want to have some challenges. I've been giving it some thought while I was doing the contracts, and we kind of talked about it a little while ago. And I think, I, know I, want to, I still want to earn my keep, you know. Uh, Go Ham Industries, oh, that's, I think Go Ham Industries have, have been great. You know, they provided me with the land, they've got, you know, I've got start off equipment, that kind of stuff. What I have placed, as well as the um, the multi-silo shop by CNS Modding and Marie, I put the container one in. Now, when this first came out, everything from it was free, so I never updated it. When it had the update, where you had to pay, and apparently it's still very, very cheap, I never updated it. So it was one of those sneaky things you could have in the background. If you were doing a Let's Play, especially subscriber contracts, those kind of things, you could have it in the background, and then you could do various different things, and it wouldn't cost you a penny. So you could do your fertilising and all that kind of stuff and get away with it. However, that's okay on my PS4. In my transfer over to PS5, because... All the game saves were, were all there, and all my DLCs were technically there. I had to reinstall all my mods. Problem was, in reinstalling this mod, I then lost the ability to have it all for free. So I haven't actually used this yet, paying for stuff. I will put a link in the description for this as well, because my mind's gone blank who this is by. But um, yeah, so that shipping container, combined with the silo from CNS and Marie, and then I'm going to put in a manure one probably next to it here so we can buy manure 
I might even do the slurry one as well. Especially until we get cows up and running. Once we get cows up and running, if we are going to do them on the scale I'm hoping to do them, we should be producing enough manure and slurry every day that we'll reach a point we won't need to be buying it. We'll have plenty of our own to keep us going. So this is kind of turning into a bit of a, a weird kind of blend between a kind of... It's not a standard let's play, it's not a narrative let's play. It's a bit of a bonkers do anything, which we've already kind of established. But it's almost a kind of mod review... Well, I suppose I am doing research, that's the whole point, isn't it? I am in the research division, so it is just a kind of showing off the mods and how they work. Like a really, really extended mod review. Kind of. This harvester is taking an absolute hammering. 6.3 hours on it already. <laughs> this is field 10 coming up, isn't it? Yep. I'll get crack in on this and then, uh, yeah. I think as well, if you've been following my Six Ashes Let's Play, and don't get me wrong, I love it. I love the map, I love what I'm doing, I love, I love the whole farming aspect of it. There have been a lot of trials and tribulations of late. <laughs> Things have not been going as well as they could have or should have, should have, of, should have. Um, again that makes this all the more kind of liberating and fun and you just can relax because it doesn't matter excellent stuff I will see you on the next one probably in the morning we'll get this filled then I'm going to buy it then we will prep it I'll probably buy it off camera because if I go through to the morning it might have another crop put in it by then. Um, so yeah, we'll prep it, get some fertiliser and stuff down, we'll get it seeded. So we'll get a chance to use some of the sowers, seeders, planters. And some of the bonkers fertilising equipment which is really cool. I, I honestly can't wait, I'm looking, for, looking forward to it immensely. As you can probably tell. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, as always. Thanks for watching.